Good morning, good morning, good morning. Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. This is Morning Joey. I'm your host, Joey Molinero. Thanks for waking up with me. As always, you know the deal. YouTube, subscribe to the channel below. Links to all the merch below as well. Cup of Joey merch, new merchandise that I've come out with. Everything you need right below. Subscribe to the channel. Daily show, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. every single day. Thanks for being with me. And uh, wow, last day of March. Pretty wild. Pretty wild, all right? We're already here. I hate uh, when people are like, man, can you just believe how time is flying? I can't believe uh, that we're already here. How, how fast time flies, man. Slow down. That's just how it is. But yeah, April 1st tomorrow, opening day tomorrow. Might see a little something about that coming out later today, all right? That's a tease. Might see a little opening day baseball action stuff coming out later today from me. Uh, so do be watching out for that. Do be, he do be doing that though. Um, but we got to get into it first, man. Uh, apparently, let me start with this. Apparently there is some, uh, online rumors, uh, that Trey Lance, the quarterback, uh, prospect from North Dakota state who now is looking to, you know, he's risen up draft boards like crazy. Like we see, Every single time we get to draft season, apparently there's some rumors going around that he might be dating Liv Cowherd, daughter of Colin Cowherd. I had this video brought to my attention uh, late last night, and so I had to start the show with it. Of course, I got to check it out here and do the share screen thing, but I did find it very interesting. Let me shift gears this. Um... Here we go. Let's get into it. Share screen, Chrome tab. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Stay with me here. All right. My dog's going crazy per usual. Number three, the Miami Dolphins are selecting, Colin. Okay. Trey Lance. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. whoa. The first whoa. Oh, I think he's special. Okay. Um, you got that off of his 300 passing attempts in college? By the way, uh, I'm not going to lie. He was at my house uh, 24 hours ago. Oh, name drop. Uh, I love your name. For this. Very so humble. Very gracious. He's got all the right things in life that he cares about. Everything that you're not. 100 passing attempts in college? By the way, uh, I'm not huh. going to lie. He was at my house uh, 24 hours ago. Oh, name drop. All right. Now we're talking. This is very interesting. Uncle Colin. I like it. He says, not going to lie, he's at my house 24 hours ago. Now, if you do some deep diving, not deep diving, it's not that deep, but if you do some diving onto Liv Cowherd's Instagram, you'll see that Trey Lance has left a few comments. He's commented publicly on, on uh, a few of her pictures. One, just a few weeks ago, Trey Lance said, uh, you do, you really do eat a lot of vegetables. I don't know what that means. I guess it's commenting on figure, maybe, how she looks. But I find it really interesting that Colin Cowherd himself would come out on his show and say, hey, being open and honest, not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. He was over 24 hours ago. Now, this was last week. Now, it could be they're just friends, you know. Uh, Trey Lance, up-and-coming star in the NFL, Liv Cowherd, star online. Maybe they're just friends. Maybe Trey Lance is smart enough to say, hey, maybe if I get a guy like Cowherd on my side, that can kind of change my narrative a little bit. Or maybe they're just really are starting to date a little bit. I mean, wouldn't be too crazy, but what is more crazy to me is thinking about Cowherd having these conversations with Trey Lance. If you remember, I did a video about that last year. And last time I checked, which was last night, because I wanted to circle back to it, circle back, touch base, hope things are well. I want to circle back to it and see, and it's up to 4 million views, and it's Cowherd after meeting his daughter's boyfriend. And in that scenario, he was talking to his wife or, or, or talking to his daughter in that scenario, 
I'm going to stop sharing the screen there. But I still think that it holds true. <laughs> Imagining him in his radio speak, in his, t- in his television speak to Trey Lance. Imagining Cowherd sitting his daughter down, Liv, and, and breaking down each of the quarterback prospects and why she should date each one of them like he's doing, like a, where Colin was right, where Colin was wrong. Mac Jones. Yeah, I think you look at him. He's got – why did I just get a little Mel Kuyper there? That was – see, now we're doing the draft stuff. Now I'm just in a Mel Kuyper mode getting the cow herd. Mac Jones. I like him. Comes from discipline. Comes from a program under Nick Saban that you can trust. He's established. He looks like a dad, so he's already ready to be a dad. Trey Lance. Huh? huh? Good to be a star. You look, he's got star potential. He's not the guy you get the minivan with. Trey Lance is the guy that you get the convertible with. (laughs) It's early. Forgive me. You're driving down the freeway in L.A. with a good-looking kid like Trey Lance. Not worried about kids. Not worried about a minivan. Mac Jones, eh, he's a minivan kind of guy. Trey Lance, superstar, good-looking, Hollywood, convertible, whereas Mac Jones, more of a minivan, sir. <laughs> you know, so he could have held on. He could he could have held on to that information. He could have said, you know, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna release this out there because then, of course, as a you know, as he always talks about, yeah, Big J Journal. <laughs> That could affect his bias. That could affect uh, how much people trust their opinion if they do trust their opinion. Oh, you're only saying that because you've met him and he's been at your house and he's dating your daughter. Three to the Dolphins, though. And now, see, that was before the trade that happened last week. So we know it was last week. Now the 49ers have that spot. But I was tuning into the herd yesterday for doing – a little research, a little show prep. You know, I always like to see what old Uncle Colin is up to, what I could pick up on to use in a different sketch or something. And uh, he still had him going three. He did not mention his daughter and Trey being over at his house this time, but he did mention that he thinks that, uh, you know, three, you know, Trey Lance has the highest ceiling and, and, and you know, you match him up. Uh, with with Kyle Shanahan and a lot of people on Twitter are making fun of NFL people and football people because literally every <laughs> every take about a quarterback is just like, well, you put him in you put him in Kyle Shanahan's system. I mean, sky's the limit for this kid. <laughs> so he still has Trey Lance going three, not to the Dolphins. A little bit more of a shock in that last week mock draft, but he still does have him going three. So I, I like this. This is interesting. You know, no one's gone public yet, and I don't think uh, there's been any photos that Trey has posted with Liv or Liv has posted with Trey or Colin's posted of all three of them. You know, I could see him doing something like that, right? Like him, like, sitting in between them on a couch thinking it's, like, a funny post. Yeah, dad life. Ate a thing of nachos and chaperoned my daughter's date with Trey Lance. Very interesting. Very, very interesting, though. I just can't believe I had that brought to my attention. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Confirm, not a backwards hat guy. Uh, no, but that's th- that's what people were freaking out about, though. Jack Braz is that uh, there are there's photos of him after games and on the sideline here. He is wearing a back backwards hat kind of guy. So, um. <laughs> Hi, Connor. <laughs> Mac Jones, more of a minivan, whereas Trey Lance. Is that convertible that you're driving in the neighborhood? Everybody loves. <laughs> oh shoot! So I, I I had to talk about that to start off the show. I thought it was I, you know of course. I mean I did a video about it last year. People still I mean that's one of the most popular videos. People come do that. What are you talking? You coward! You're talking about his daughter's uh, new boyfriend. Like so now that there's this you know rumors going around swirling that uh, it's Trey Lance. I mean this is just prime time material. I might do a video of that. I might do a blog of that or something. Cowherd's uh, Cowherd breaking down the quarterbacks for his daughter. 
and and all of just just all of the analogies and the metaphors of why she should date such and such and why she shouldn't date such and such. Yeah. So keep an eye on it. Throughout draft season, we're left we're less than a month away from the draft tomorrow, April first. Uh, God, tomorrow's April Fool's Day. That sucks. So we're gonna have to deal with like um, just beware. Teams are gonna. There's going to be uniform changes that aren't real. There's going to be um, pranks of somebody like leaving. That's not real. I mean, just just be on high alert. You know, that's coming. I'll never forget when the Colts did that. They had the whole ice style. It was the the all white uniform, all white helmet, and you know, people thought it was for real. I probably even did for a little bit, and then you just all you got to do check check beneath the tweet and remind yourself April first. Trying to get some engagement, trying to make it happen, and uh, damn, okay. But at least tomorrow is opening day, so that's good. So it's going to be 39, a balmy 39 uh, degrees for a high up at Wrigley. So, um, you know, that's going to be a shit show of a game. I think the sun's supposed to be out at least, so that'll be nice. But uh, damn, Cubs past few years haven't haven't typically opened um, the season at home. I think like the last three or four years, they're always – in Texas or Miami or uh, California. But uh, this year opening up at Wrigley against the Buccos tomorrow. So really, really excited about that, man. I think I'm going to have Carl on tomorrow and try to figure out what the hell is going on with the Cubs. Carl tomorrow, Robbie Hummel tomorrow. Um, So really, really excited about tomorrow's show as well. But let's get into triple shot. Final four is set. First pump here. UCLA upsets Michigan late, late last night. I woke up to it um, and saw that, uh, you know, my my employer, uh, Team Portnoy here, his guys went down low scoring, low scoring, just brawl UCLA and Michigan there. Um, but I said, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed, dude. I, I, I said that a Big Ten team was finally going to do it. And, I mean, if the Big Ten isn't going to do it, hey, come on, don't be eating the – hey, don't eat the table. Don't eat the table. Happy? Dog's eating the table. Come on. Here. Chew on this. Chew on this. Or shoe. You have the shoe. He's got a shoe. He's got a bottle. He's got a pillow. And he still is trying to gnaw on the side of this coffee table. Come on, man. Usually he's sleeping during the show, but not today, I guess. Um, I mean, if the Big Ten's not going to do it this year of all years, when, when are they going to do it? Michigan, Illinois, Iowa, Ohio State, I mean, Purdue even. I mean, not even a single Final Four team. I Damn, that's a bummer. And that, that looks bad on me because I said I went on, I've been on record all before the tournament started. I was like, yeah, people were asking. I said, it's going to be a Big Ten team. I really think so. And Indianapolis, they got, you know, a few, they've been the best conference all, all year long. They've been the best uh, teams all year long. And uh, I mean, besides Gonzaga, I actually watched Gonzaga last night and uh, for like the second time, you know, and uh, Jalen Suggs is really good. <laughs> I'm not breaking any news here, but when they play every you know game during the regular season at midnight and none of your teams that you're focused on are on their side of their bracket, you just tend to not watch them that much. And um, yeah, Jalen Suggs, super good, man. I'm kind of pulling for them now. I'm kind of pulling for for Gonzaga. I'd like to see um, I, I'd like to see the undefeated squad. You know, last time there was a Final Four in Indy, you had Kentucky that was undefeated, and they lost in the Final Four to Wisconsin. Sam Decker was supposed to be on the show this morning, and he's just ghosted me. So, if anybody's got contacts with Sam Decker, Wisconsin legend, you know, let him know. I'm gonna have to get Big Cat on or something. Um, but yeah, Sam Decker and Frank Kaminsky squad, they beat Kentucky in 2015. Now 2021 got another undefeated team. Uh, is UCLA just the absolute team of destiny. You're going to keep bringing the magic and, and upset them. So you got UCLA against Gonzaga, the blue blood 11 seed underdog against the undefeated best team in the country. Gonzaga. That'll be a lot of fun on Saturday. Hey, come on. Happy. No. No, no, no. Thank you. And then the other side, you got Baylor versus Houston. Um, so two two Texas squads. It's funny that uh, <laughs> it's like, all right, Final Four is in Indianapolis. Let's get four teams that are just 
as, as far away as you can be. Yep, literally. Not even a regional team anywhere close to it. That's your final four. <laughs> Just give them as far away as possible. That'll be fun. I mean, Saturday, I'm um, Saturday. The three on three tournament is supposed to be going on. Um, it's supposed to be great weather at the uh, Pan Am Plaza, I think, the pavilion over there on um, South Meridian. No, South Illinois Street and uh, off Capitol. And so I'm going to be over there. Uh, I think I'm going to hang out with um, Mark Titus and Tate Frazier <coughs> for a little bit. Excuse me. So I'll hop on with Titus and Tate and uh, do three on three and then talk about the final four. That's going to happen later on uh, that night. You got Baylor Houston, the first game, uh, of course, Gonzaga, the uh, undefeated squad and UCLA in the late matchup. So you know, I'm excited. I, uh, I, I mean, I think Gonzaga versus Baylor or Houston, yeah, it's going to be a killer national championship no matter what. And then of course, if you get UCLA, uh, the, the 11 seed that was at a play in game that somehow makes it all the way there. I think, uh, you know, that'll be interesting as well. So pretty, pretty solid final four with some historic shit again on the line in Indianapolis. So excited about that. Uh, pump shot. Number two, saw this, uh, from CNBC. And in case anybody needed a reminder for this, you know, uh, they say, don't post your vaccination card on social media. Okay. No shit. Um, uh, from CNBC, again, it says, it's tempting to tell the world as soon as you receive a coveted COVID shot, but there's a reason to rein it in. For starters, sharing a photo of your vaccination card on social media makes you a potential target for identity theft. No shit. Not only does the personal information on the card, including your full name, birthday, make you vul vulnerable to scammers, it also provides all the information they need to create and sell phony cards online. Parentheses, these cards are often given after vaccine recipients get their first dose. If you want to post about your vaccine, there are safer ways to do it. Yeah, that's like, don't we have a sticker? <laughs> I mean, when people go and vote, they don't post, <laughs> they don't They don't take a shot of their, of their ballot and they're like, hey, Here's who I voted for and all these policies and all this privacy information that I don't want out there. Nope. Just slap an I voted sticker on your forehead. But I'm sure that there is problems with the sticker with COVID because, you know, you have to, that's people exchanging them and you have to pull it and you have to take it and you have to put it on you. And then like, there's reason for, I don't know. And you know, you can't right now we can't drink out of water fountains and we can't, uh, we can't, we can't, um, pass out papers and we can't uh, have menus and things like that. So it's like the stickers, maybe that's a problem, but I mean, at least that would be the first logical next step, right? Don't post your vaccine card. Here's a sticker. Hey, I've been vaccinated. Congratulations. It's just, it's wild that, uh, you know, We're in a time where we have to remind people not to post um, pictures of their full name and date of birth and phone number and all that kind of shit on there and all their information. But people want to so badly to be able to get that recognition that they just go ahead with it anyways. Just, you know, maybe just take a picture of the building, you know, when you're walking in. Or I don't know, have uh, have the person you're with if there's somebody that you can't be with, or take a selfie of maybe getting a shot. I don't know. I've seen those pictures out there. People, you know, uh, are you know get the picture and they're sitting in the chair and they got like a thumbs up and the nurse or doctor or whoever is pumping them with the shot. That also works. I think the sticker probably probably the best option there. Uh, third shot, apparently Mario's no more. Um, Super Mario, today is the last day. Apparently they're killing Super Mario. From Tech Radar, Super Mario 3D All-Stars won't be available on the Nintendo much longer. 
So it includes ports of Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario 64, all in one package. Um, if you haven't bought Super Mario 3D All-Stars yet, you have to do it today, March 31st. These games are being pulled from the Nintendo Switch eShop. So they're they're ending the Super Mario brand, I guess. The Super Mario game. From why they're disappearing, if you're looking for a solid explanation as to why it's happening, there really isn't one. Nintendo's comments have been restrained to saying that this was a limited time celebration of Mario's 35th anniversary. As a result, the internet has amusingly started to refer to March 31st as the day Mario dies. I mean, leave it to the internet to be so dramatic about uh, something like this. Uh, if you haven't <laughs> checked out yesterday's show, like everybody was being dramatic about Kyle Chandler. But neither here nor there. That, that That's a shame. I don't have a Nintendo Switch, but it's tough to beat Super Mario. It's tough to beat in a, a classic Mario game. Nintendo 64, I don't think they're talking about that. But, you know, maybe this is the start. Maybe this is the, the downward slope to no more Mario. The day Mario dies. You know, and everybody is... Everybody is a big fan of, of Mario Party. Mario Party is pretty good, but Mario Party is uh, it's difficult, man. And it's like... To me, it's like the monopoly of video games. If you're playing Mario Party, you better <laughs> you better have some chips and dip and a comfy seat because you're not leaving for about three hours. Maybe I'm just not good at the game, but every time that I've played it, everybody's like, you want to play Mario Party? I'm like, can we just do Mario Kart? You play Mario Kart, you turn it on, you put the game in, yeah, pick you know Rainbow Road or whatever the fuck. It, by the way, if somebody picks Rainbow Road the first time, you're in trouble because that means that they're probably really, really super good at the game and they know you're going to eat shit on Rainbow Road. Um, but yeah, I mean, you plug in Mario Kart, plug it in, turn it on. All of a sudden you're racing within five seconds and then you three or four races in and it's been like, 15 minutes all right that killed enough time good to go had my fun good mario party nope get your sleeping bags <laughs> i played mario party with uh big cat and nick uh and pft when i was out in the office the last time in august and uh the loser had to wrestle billy football and i lost so, um, <laughs> it, it seemed like, I guess, a little bit of necessary hazing from them for the new guy. Uh, and because I told him that I, you know, didn't really play Mario Party that much because I don't, again, like to invest four and a half hours into a video game. But um, I played, I was confused, I didn't do well. And uh, then I had to wrestle Billy football for like five minutes on Big Cat's live stream. So in the Barstool hallway, in the hallways of, of, uh, of the, the Barstool HQ3. So not only was I wrestling Billy football, but I had to do it on, uh, you know, kind of like a concrete floor because they just have the, the concrete floors there uh, in the hallways. Not good. The first, the first challenge was like chugging mustard or like pickle juice or something like that, which I'm cool with. I told you, the power of the pickle I'm I'm down. Eating some pickles, drinking pickle juice. I love mustard. That shit doesn't bother me. So I was like, yep, let's do it. And then, of course, I think Big Cat and PFT were like, ah, they could tell I was a little too excited. So they're like, ah, no, I think that's too easy. What about uh, the loser has to wrestle Billy football? Of course, everybody was like, yes. So there you go. Yeah, so today, if you have a Nintendo Switch, which uh, was never an option for me, uh, because I'm still living like I was when I was eight years old. And my parents would just be like, absolutely not. Because, you know, who had the money for that? I certainly, We certainly didn't. And so knock on them. That's just, you know, when your friends would show up with uh, the new Carmelo Anthony shoes the day after they come out, my mom was like, yeah, no, I'm not just going to go 
buy you, you know, a hundred and fifteen dollar pair of sneakers that you're going to get beat up in a week. So same thing for Nintendo Switch. So I've never gotten a Nintendo Switch. I still go to the Nintendo 64 or GameCube. But if you have one of those Super Mario 3D All Stars, you better go and get it today because it's not going to be there any longer after this. Mario Super Mario 3D All Stars is dying. It is funny though. It's kind of a bummer that um, Nintendo 64. That was like my first, <laughs> you know, so I get hired a year ago and um, I, I, I was like, what do I, you know, I, I want to like get something. What should I get? I mean, I want to like celebrate, reward myself, I guess. I don't know. And um, so I look, I'm like, well, what about, I, I don't have a Nintendo 64. I had one in college with my roommate and it was great and I don't have it anymore and I miss it. And I looked and I got a package of one, like a, like a combo. Uh, for a Nintendo 64, two controllers, Mario Kart, and another game, I think for like 250 Which, you know, I'm cool with. There's a whole package. What I'm saying is that like Nintendo 64, you, you, it's like with baseball cards or, you know, I guess stocks. I don't really know how stocks work at all. You know, ask my boss, watch him. But um, even though he's not a financial advisor. Uh, but... We, should, we missed that time frame. You know, Nintendo 64 was hot, like 98, 99, 2000, you know, and then all the other shit came out. So then it kind of went on the back burner. You should have held on to yours. If I could go back, I'd just buy up a shit ton of Nintendo 64s and Nintendo 64 stuff and then realize that it was going to come back inevitably like it did. And now it is. And so now people are like, I mean, you go on, you look for Super Smash Brothers uh, or like an original Mario Kart game on Nintendo 64. That shit is like uh, like a uh, Super Smash Brothers game is in the nineties, of, of like ninety five dollars. Um, some have even been more expensive than that. If you go and try to get one now, this is how it goes. You know, it's like if you had your P- if you if you still have a PS two, hold on to that shit, take care of it. You know, because here in like the next year or two or three. PS2 is going to be, oh, wow, we're on the PS5 and everything. Like, but I still got the PS2 and it works. We can complain in CA06. My phone's buzzing. This isn't good. Oh, no, there's an Amber Alert. Yikes. Lawrence, Indiana, too. Dark green. I don't know if I'm... It's on my phone. My wife's from uh, Lawrence, Indiana. That's scary. I remember when I was in radio class... Uh, when I was in college, we had to like learn how to do those updates because if there's like a severe weather or, or, or a um, weather warning or an Amber Alert and you were on the air, you were like responsible for relaying that information. And I'm like, I'm 19. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I barely know how to turn the mic on, let alone like do an Amber Alert with something this serious happening. Luckily, you know, I was a jazz station that only like, you know, 25 75 year olds listen to I'm not saying they can't help but i'm just you know i wasn't working at like the worldwide leader of the news yeah super mario gone that's triple shot uh let's get into somebody so like i said we've been doing these things on twitter where alex sulkin and robbie fox and if, uh, sometimes ken jack and a few other people uh jeff delo you know um we'll tag each other we'll do like a five list and now it's gotten to the point where other people on Twitter will also uh, send us these tweets of their own list that, that, that they like. And then you know, they'll want to get our opinion on them or whatever for us to list ours. This one is one that I think I'm probably going to release today or tomorrow, but I want to get ahead of it. Five movie characters that you wish you were. All right. Uh, so that you wish that like when you're watching it, you wish you were them or like you just wish that you could be them in real life. Or maybe they don't have, you know, there's a whole bunch of different explanations going on that you can use. And, um, yeah, so you know how it is. Start with five, down to one. Five movie movie characters you wish you were. Number five for me, Han Solo. I know it's in a, it's in a uh, fictitious galaxy, fantasy sci-fi galaxy, you know. So it's hard to necess- – that's why he's not as high. Because I love Han Solo. He's my favorite Star Wars character. But with him being and something that technically you couldn't be, um, 
that's what puts him at five for me. Uh, and just the fact that like, I'm not as good looking or as cool as, as Harrison Ford, but I guess thus lies why I'd want to be him. That's why he's number five. Number four, man, I loved Aladdin growing up. And I still do. It's like, I, I feel like Aladdin, the, the original, the animated one with Robin Williams as the genie, that doesn't get enough credit. And if you remember, the real ones know Aladdin for uh, the original, not the original Nintendo, but the Nintendo in the 90s. I forget exactly what it's called. That game, the Aladdin game for that game system, unreal. One of the best games of all time. But Aladdin was cool, man. And he was like, he had his little pal that was on his shoulder and he was just making things work. He was kind of run from the law, you know, like he wasn't uh, beholden to anybody. You know, he was like up on the up and up. Um, he was sliding off of, uh, you know, he was just like, he knew how to, he was like hardcore parkour before that was a thing. Like Aladdin was just jumping around, hopping around, sliding off of things and making it look super cool. And like, you know, having the, the uh, cop, you know, um, uh, employees of the city, the guards, um, you know, the castle, like fall over him and everything. And he was just kind of like laughing and would like toss an apple to his, to his little, uh, you know, monkey friend on his back and everybody was having a good time. He could sing, you know, he looked good. He, he got Jasmine, right? I mean, he has a magic carpet. He's got a genie friend. I mean, who doesn't want to be a lad? You know? So Aladdin, number four. Number three, Happy Gilmore. You know, of all the Adam Sandler characters, this one has definitely got to be the go-to. I think he's the coolest. You know, he's kind of got the badass thing going on. Pro golfer. Um, you know, he, he gets uh, Virginia, Julie Bowen, super pretty. Um, you know, he's 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 taking care of his grandma. He's got the house, you know, he's friends with Chubbs, rest in peace. Um, but yeah, like happy, I mean, great name, obviously named my dog after him. Uh, and then you're, you're, you're taking the tour by storm. You know, you're, you're standing out in the middle of this golf world. Three happy Gilmore Two. this one's going to throw some people for a loop. I think Jacob Palmer. Now, not, a household name, not a household movie character name, but Jacob Palmer played by Ryan Gosling in Crazy Stupid Love. The uh, 2011 rom-com with Steve Carell and Emma Stone and that other, the lady who plays Emma Stone's mom who, you know, is, is in a whole bunch of stuff as well. But again, she's kind of like Kyle Chandler. Like I can never remember her name. Uh, Marissa Tomei is in that, like a huge star studded cast. But Jacob Palmer, played by Ryan Gosling, did just the epitome of cool. I mean, he drives cool cars, cool clothes. He knows how to talk to anybody, guy or girl. He, he's the kind of guy that like he walks into a restaurant or a bar and everybody's like, whoa. You know, he's got some presence. Style, off the charts. You know, looks good too. Haircut on point, you know, just just good looking dude, cool. Not not a goofy guy, just always knows what to do in every situation. Teaches Steve Carell how to, you know, also be be cool and, and talk to ladies and, and and but then he settles down, you know? Then he settles down and he knows when to settle down and he gets Emma Stone. And uh, he still is cool, even though he's settled down. And so he's like, he's like what the Fonz would have been if the Fonz would have, we ever would have seen him be able to settle down, you know? Like with Wedding Singer, you know? <laughs> you know what happened to guys like the Fonz? They got canceled, man. Because nobody wants to see 50-year-old dudes hitting on chicks. Alan Covert, absolutely right. And we don't see that with Jacob Palmer. Jacob Palmer settles down with Emma Stone. Number one, I, th I, I, I think this might throw some people for surprise as well. I think number one, people were thinking that it might have been like a Han Solo or an Adam Sandler character, if you know me. But if you really know me, if you really, really know me, you won't be surprised. Number one, movie character, you wish you were 
Vito Corleone, the godfather. Man, just the, 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 the patriarch of patriarchs. So much wisdom, so much power, but not in your face about it, you know? He's one of those kind of guys that, you know, if he, if he gives you a look or he puts his hand on your shoulder, he didn't even have to say anything. You just know. Awesome name. You know, Godfather 2, where you see his come up when he when he came over from uh, Corleone, and then he and then he's at Ellis Island, and, and he's all by himself. And then he comes up through the neighborhood in New York City, and, and he kills uh, the – I forget his name off the top of my head, but he kills the Don, and he takes over the neighborhood. Robert De Niro's playing him. I mean, you get Robert De Niro and Marlon Brando playing this character. How can you not want to be Vito Corleone? Vito. Vito Provolone on the south side of Indianapolis. If you're in town, if you're looking for a really good Italian restaurant, you got Iozzo's on South Meridian. It's you know just outside of downtown, pretty much is downtown. And you keep going further on that same street, you go south by about 15 minutes, you run into uh, Vito Provolone's. Super, super good. I don't think there's any tie-in to the Godfather there, but besides the Vito. Number one, Vito Corleone. Power, money, influence. But he doesn't. He does it in a cool way. He does it. He does it, and he does it. He, he, he's 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 like a mob boss the right way, you know. He's not like his son Sonny, who was a hothead. Honorable mention: Django Fett. Now, for doing a top ten, Django Fett didn't really. I mean, he had a huge influence because he was the guy that they based the clone army off of, right? Took his DNA to make the clone army, so he has a huge influence in that way. But we only see him in Attack of the Clones. And then he gets decapitated. So that was another reason where I was like, you know, I don't really want to get my head cut off. And uh, if we're looking at it that way, head cut off by the, the, the lightsaber of Mace Windu. But Jango Fett, the, the silver and the blue armor and the double pistols that he's wielding. And just that scene alone with Obi-Wan and Attack of the Clones. When they're outside and it's raining, it's pouring and they're going at it. I mean, the dude has also, you know, he's got the jet pack. He's got um, the, the rocket launchers on his wrist, the double pistols, like I said. And, and, and the armor is just tough to beat. Chic, sleek, you know, but he, he just plays a small role. But the video game, the Bounty Hunter video game, too, that's what did it for me as well. PS2, we were talking about earlier, GameCube as well. That era, early 2000s, right around when Attack of the Clones was coming out. You had the Bounty Hunter video game, and it was based off of Django Fett. And it was a kick-ass game, man. It was it was a really, really fun, underrated, I think, Star Wars video game, at least in my mind. So that's what played the role into it as well. Boba Fett, honorable mention. And now we're getting Boba Fett coming back, baby. He's still alive. Spoiler alert, Mandalorian. He's kicking people's ass. He's kicking Stormtrooper's ass with uh, it, with just one of the fucking Tusken Raider, um, whatchamacallits. Can't remember off the top of my head. We're now we're getting Book of Boba, so you know he used to be just one of those characters that was in, and now you think he's just rotting in the Sarlacc pit, but he's back. Boba Fett, I have him on my keychain. Awesome character. Always wanted to be one of him too. Would have made a top ten. And then I mentioned him, Sonny Corleone. Just a badass. Just a great A badass. Prince of the city. The guy looked good. Everybody knew Sonny. You weren't fucking with Sonny Corleone. The only way, way you were fucking with Sonny Corleone is if you were killing him, which he did end up with about 35 bullets in him. So that's one reason why I didn't want to be him as well. And, you know, he, was, you know, he had his affairs and he was doing all that. So I was like, eh, you know, that, that, that's tough. But I, I, Santino Corleone, I mean, I love that. I love the name, love the look, the personality. He's a badass movie character, but he just didn't make the top five. And then uh, number five, this one was tough just because I love this character so much. Not number five on the honorable mention, though. Joker. Not, not, um, what's this guy's name? The fucking one that came out in 2019. Why can't I not think of the guy's name? Uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Not Joaquin Phoenix. I did enjoy that movie, but, you know, Joker. Heath Ledger. Uh, but again, it's just like, 
it's tough to put as much as he is an amazing character and an influential character. Did a lot of, you know, if we're talking, that's who you'd want to be eh, if you could be in real life. That's, uh, that's tough. He did a lot of bad things. <laughs> he did a lot of bad stuff. Uh, you know, it wasn't all right upstairs. So you can't really make yourself want to be him. It's like, you know, I, when we were talking about with Kyle Guy a couple weeks ago, he's having a kid. And I was like, you're a Star Wars fan. Your name's Kyle. You could go Kylo for your son's name. You know, Kylo Guy. But then we agreed, you know, you don't really want to explain to people and, and to uh, your son that he's named after a character that, based off that character, you know, is responsible for the deaths of a lot of people. <laughs> so kind of the same deal with, with uh, you know, the Heath Ledger Joker or any Joker, really. But yeah, five Han Solo, four Aladdin, three Happy Gilmore, two Jacob Palmer, Ryan Gosling, Crazy Stupid Love, that's who it is, look him up, and then one. Vito Corleone. Yeah. Michael. That's it. Five movie characters. So I'm gonna make a graphic. I'm gonna get um I'm gonna I'm gonna make a graphic or something to put that list out there and see what uh Alec and Robbie and, and all those all those guys have to say because it's fun. It's fun to talk about those. Um <clears throat> let's see. Oh, this is funny. Why you got a female hairdo? Uh I don't know, Leslie. I, I, it's 2021. I didn't think that uh, a male having long hair was uh, considered female. And if that's, you know, I didn't think that's a problem. <laughs> From Peterson L82, Jacob Palmer, David Linhagen. Yep. You know. If you know, you know. And you know. Chris, Happy Gilmore was the Steph Curry of golf. Changed the game. Now you're sounding like Cowherd. When he gets into the most, like, influential uh, you know, basketball players, and he always has one of those guys like Steph Curry that like you don't really think about, but then he somehow convinces you that that's how it is. Think about it. Before Steph Curry, it was a bang around inside game with the biggest guys you can get. Steph Curry comes, and now everybody wants to shoot three like the little guys. There. <laughs> oh man, thanks for waking up with me, guys. Appreciate this. Here we go. Uh, of course, we got to ask about teams because um, people are always curious and wondering and, and um, not not familiar, uh, even though I've, I've said it a lot. But, hey, I've learned. I'm trying to learn from my wife and from other people that um, it's not your fault that you don't know. Uh, so I'll explain. Cubs, Purdue, Steelers. Uh, interesting choice. Who's your NBA team? My NBA team is the Pacers. A lot of people give me a hard time because I'm an Indianapolis kid and I don't root for uh, the Colts, but I do root for the Pacers, and I have my whole life. Uh, Cubs, no baseball team in Indianapolis. Um, you know, they're only three hours north, and my dad was a Cubs fan growing up. Watched them on WGN all the time. I mean, they're you know, it's like how can you not be romantic about baseball? How can you not be romantic about the Cubs? You know, I grew up with um, you know Harry Carey passed when I was like five, so I don't really remember him as much. But still, like the stories of Harry Carey, Wrigley Field, Wrigleyville, Sammy Sosa. I mean. The, the uniforms, the, the the whole thing. I just I fell in love. Uh, Purdue. My wife went there, and I was I I didn't go to like a big school, uh, so you know it was tough to like really root for the squads, you know, because we weren't like March Madness or you know sat, you know college football on game day or anything like that. Um, she went to Purdue, and and we got engaged at Purdue, and you know so while I was falling in love with her, I fell in love with Purdue really. So that, and then uh, the Steelers. Uh, my dad grew up a Steelers fan in the 70s, um, you know, still is, obviously. But, um, uh, yeah, and then just pass it down to me and, and my sister and, and her husband and everything like that. And then I root for the Pacers. Um, so, yep, there it is. Yeah, dude, Bounty Hunter, that game is unreal. I want it so much. Yeah, I mean, the the, the Star Wars games you had, you had Bounty Hunter. Uh, that was sick. Uh, honestly, the Revenge of the Sith video game for PS2 was great as well. Um, you know, you could have like the alternate ending where Anakin kills the emperor and he takes over and, you know, he kills Obi-Wan, uh, and, and then he goes and kills the emperor and he takes over and he doesn't end up being, um, the Darth Vader that we all know. He's just, you know, he's, he's a human, you know, he's more machine now than man. He's no machine at all. And that alternate ending. So that was really, really fun. Um, Steve's laugh is my favorite thing. I don't know what that is. Favorite cub, Henry Rowan Gardner. I mean, that too, G-Trox. Like, I, 
you know, I, I, I used to fall asleep when I was a kid on VHS to rookie of the year or angels in the outfield every single night. Um, so I, you know, it's just one of those things that I just, again, I just fell in love with, you know what I mean? Is this the last day on Periscope? Uh, no. Why would it be the last day of Periscope? We're just starting on Periscope. Uh, from Connor, Battlefront 2 on PS2. I can't see those emojis, but yeah, Battlefront 2. I mean, you could play that game for hours where you were just like, uh, it wasn't even missions. It was just, um, it, it was like a free-for-all. I forgot, if, Melee, I think it was. Um, yeah, like Melee is what it was called, I think. And you would, uh, Steve Carell laugh. Yeah. Um, the Melee is what it was. You could play like good dudes versus bad dudes. And uh, so you would just be in like Moss Eisley and it would be like Han Solo versus General Grievous and, you know, Darth Maul versus Yoda and uh, super, super fun, man. The Steve Carell laugh. Yeah, Steve Carell's got one of those laughs that like when you hear him laugh, you just start to laugh like it makes you feel better, you know. Um, but I agree with you there. What's up, Sean? How you doing, man? Good to see you. Thanks for being here with me. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know why um, Leslie said that this isn't the last day on on uh, Periscope, but he or they deleted it, so I don't know what that meant. Um, but like I said, Saturday I'm going to be in the three on three tournament, and I'm not going to be in it. I'm not going to play because uh, I don't play pickup basketball. Because I know that if I play pickup basketball, I would end up like breaking my leg or something, and I just. You know, or, or I wouldn't break my leg because that would be a quicker heel than a high ankle sprain. And I know that I would I would 1,000% sprain my ankle, a high ankle sprain, and I would be sitting there for like two and a half, three months with a high ankle sprain that just is nagging and won't go away. And I don't need that. So that's why I don't play. I don't play pickup basketball. I don't play. Um, I don't play slow pitch softball. None of that. I'm in a euchre league. You know, because in Euchre, you sit, you pass around some cards, you talk, have a couple of beers. That's it. So, you know, if anybody's like, oh, you should play in this or you should do that, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, yeah. So Saturday, though, I'll be at the Pan Am uh, Plaza at the Pavilion in, in downtown Indy. And uh, I'll be doing – I'm going to hop on the stream there with Titus and Tate um, and, and, you know, have some fun. So if you're out and about this Final Four weekend in Indy, come over there. I think it's at like 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock, something like that. Uh, and then tomorrow I'm going to have uh, – I haven't talked to him yet, so I'm kind of putting this out there before I even get approval for him. But it's opening day. Uh, tomorrow's opening day, so I'm going to get um, – I think I'm going to get Carl, uh, Barstool Carl, come on, talk some Cubs, get his opinion, figure out what the hell's going on, if they're going to pay Rizzo like he deserves – you know, if they don't, if they don't pay Anthony Rizzo, I'm gonna have. I'm, I mean, it, it's gonna be a real, real problem. Um, it's gonna be a real, real problem. Uh, I, I'll still be a fan, obviously, because I've been a fan my whole life. But I just don't understand. And everybody can tell. You know, I know there's gonna be the smart guys or smart girls out there who are gonna tell me, uh, you know, oh well, he's he's aging, and we've gotten what you need from him, and it's time to look to the future, and you don't want to spend that much money. On, on some, I don't even care what it is. Anthony Rizzo is one of those dudes that goes beyond all exceptions. Anthony Rizzo needs to be a Cub for life. He does not need to be in any other uniform. He needs to be a Cub for life. They need to retire 44 when he's gone. They need to have a statue of him with his arms up after he caught the final out of the World Series. They need to have all those things. So the fact that they're, they're that they're lowballing this man is really pissing me off, and it's pissing a lot of other people off too. There's no excuse for that. Now, if everybody you know you, you, you've gotten rid uh, you've gotten rid of guys like Lester and Schwarber, and you know a lot of the people who pull on the heartstrings from those runs that were made a handful of years ago to the World Series and to the NLCS, but Rizzo's a guy that that can't happen. Rizzo. Is a guy that we know has been there, was has been there through it all, was there at the absolute worst, and was obviously there at the peak of the mountain. There's nowhere else that he should be rather than playing first base for the Chicago Cubs and walking up to you know bad blood by Taylor Swift or intoxicated and getting the crowd going. He's Anthony freaking Rizzo. 
figure it out. So I'm going to have him on to talk about that a little bit. Uh, Purdue legend and current ESPN broadcaster Robbie Hummel is going to hop on with me as well. So tomorrow should be a really, really great show. Uh, everybody, I appreciate you waking up with me today. Apparently, Periscope's going out of business, according to Leslie. So I'm going to figure out that, figure something out about that. But hey, we're live every single day on YouTube, anyways. Subscribe to the channel if you're on YouTube. If you're watching it there, these videos live on uh, past the live show, live every single day, nine to 10 a.m. around that time. Sometimes we go longer, sometimes we go shorter. Tomorrow's going to be a great show. Robbie Hummel, hopefully Barstool Carl. Get your merch below. Cup of Joey merch, uh, Juju One Last Ride merch and uh, uh, Indie Insanity merchandise all below. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning in and waking up with me again. We'll talk to you tomorrow live at 9.